Yeah, good. Uh, I'm Troy O'Keefe. Uh, I work for Red Hat uh, as a consultant, uh, doing a lot of satellites, uh, which is the upstream of 4 million Catello. So I want to talk to you a bit about my experiences um, and introduction. So hopefully you guys know what Formula is already. If not, we're just going to recap. So we're all at the standard base. Uh, we've got a bit about provisioning, a bit about configuration management, plugins, and then we go over a bit about Catello. So Formula provisioning. Formula provisions in the same way on bare metal, virtualization, cloud, and containers. It's one simple UI where every provision on it is the same process. Come on, come on in. <coughs> Configuration management, so with Puppet, Ansible, Chef, Solstack. I think there's a couple of others as well, but they're the main ones. It's a rich ecosystem of plugins. So we've got Ansible there at the top, we've got Azure, Azure for Cloud, Booktis allows you to um, insert CD ROM or mount an ISO onto your machine. And then it will, it will boot up, it will contact Foreman and download a kickstart or whatever it is uh, and install the system in the computer the way you want. Uh, you've got uh, Cockpit, hopefully some of you know what Cockpit, Cockpit is. Um, Docker, Discovery, very similar to Boot Disk. Um, whereas Boot Disk is normally a very specific ISO or specific CD to that single operator, to that single system, uh, Discovery will give you a generic CD you can boot up, it will contact form. You then see that in the form of UI, you can go to it, you can hit provision, and you configure it all from the form inside, and it will send a reboot command off. So you've got Puppet DB in there as well, OpenSCAT for security, remote execution, very similar to Ansible, but it allows you to run the ad hoc commands uh, arbitrary. Uh, so, Catello. Catello is Foreman, plus Pulp, plus Candlebit. Pulp, config. Um, Pulp manages all your content, so it configures it all. It, it syncs content, so RPM repos, um, Debian repos, Puppet modules from the Forge, uh, Candlebin interacts with subscription manager to configure your system to use those repos, and then together they equal well, Catello. So this is a bit, this is quite a complicated slide about Catello architecture. That's not explained very well, no. actually. Um, so you've got a form at the top there. Uh, Interact with a puppet master. That puppet master could be an external puppet master, it could be Ansible, you could uh, you know, swap that out with Candlebin. So there's an awful lot of ports, and then down here at the bottom, uh, you've got a capsule or the, the smart proxy. This is for isolated zones in your network. So you might have a specific DMZ where you don't want to connect back to your uh, main Catello server. Um, and you're not going to take that off. So all connections go via that proxy. And then you've got the ports over there to the host. Obviously, some of these ports are kind of optional. So all the ones in green, they're provisioning. You've got this one for open scap, which you might not want to use. That one for execution or Ansible, which again, you might not want to use. Uh, you've got pulp. Up in the young repos there, your puppet modules if you're using that. Um, a lot of it's optional, even, even Cupid here, that's optional as well. So the content is <coughs> so new in the next version of Excello, which I think is 3.6, uh, we're going to be able to manage Debian content, which is quite nice. It's been a long way to feature, which is a lot of what we wanted. You've got ISOs, uh, you've got puppet modules, which I mentioned earlier, RPM and Docker content. You can also uh, use it as a file repository, so you can upload files or sync them from an external server and use that in the same way you use RPMs, which could be good for putting large files for your configuration management if you don't want to store them in your config manager and you don't want to package them, or you probably should package them. Content sources, so Yarn, Debian, Puppet Forge, Docker, file repositories. If you're syncing up from a file repositories from another web server, you need a little manifest file. Uh, not many people, no one really has them, so you have to create it yourself. Uh, generally, people don't just upload uh, a kind of ad hoc from the UI or from the API. Uh, you can direct upload. Content views. 
So you've now you've got all this content in, in uh, Catello, and now you want to be able to manage that. You don't want people just uploading kind of, you know, you might have a developer team who care about their application, you've got the OS, do they really care about? And you can't, if, imagine the developers just keep uploading, they're testing on a different thing against what the OS is up to. So you need to manage that so they're not, so they're all in sync. So you want to be able to promote that through your life cycles one by one together. So you want to create snapshots at the moment in time, say, I want everything from this date onwards, or I want everything, I want the base OS from this date, but the application I want from that date, and my configuration management I want from that date. Um, it can also not just be done with dates. You can do it on say, I want this date plus um, OpenSSL for the latest, or something. So lots of flexibility there. So the default organization view. That is the simplest view. It comes out of the box. It's everything that you've seen always. So generally, you might have this maybe for your development environments, where people just want the latest all the time, or you might not even want it at all, but it's just everything that the Catello server syncs all the time. Custom content views. So generally, you operate on. So you see here, you've got your OS repo, you've got your application repos, you might have your public modules, uh, and then you've got your filters applied. And together, that will create a version. So normally version one, it could be version two, what have you. Uh, you then promote that version through to dev, prod, or you create these lifecycle environments in, within Catello, and you can promote that along a path, or you, don't, you can just skip the path, so you could skip dev for whatever reason. And you can apply filters. And then when you have a new release, you might create version two, you then promote that again to dev to your testing, you might, might fail, you might come back and create version three, I go to dev, you're successful there, and you want to go to prod. <coughs> composite content views. So composite content views are basically where a content views here, you've got your OS repos, your app repos, your, all your repos as individual components, and composite content views. They're now content views. So a composite content view contains multiple different content views. So some people like to say, I want my developer team to manage their own software, package it, and manage their own app, their own application, and their own content view. They would have permissions to make permissions to do that, but they wouldn't have permission to manage the base OS content view, and then together you bring those, those two content views together and you present that one composite content view to machines and basically all the repos that are in those content views. Arata. Obviously CentOS doesn't have Arata, uh, but Apple does, Fedora does. Uh, you can kind of create your own Arata for CentOS, getting it from other sources. So, Catello will show you all this Arata. Uh, categories like new packages, so it's Fedora only, your bug fix enhancements, and security. Hey, I'll go. You then be able to see a report from that on the Catello server. So you can say, this particular article is applicable to, I don't know, 10 out of my 100 different machines. You can see which 10 that is, and you can apply an update for those 10 machines. You've also got, it might be, because of that content view, so that, that errata might be applicable, but not installable. So you've got to be careful there that the errata isn't rooted in that content view. But we are, we do easily show you that. So, errata so, return. So, there's my host page, and as you can see over here on the left, on the right, you're right. Uh, first one is security, the second one along is bug fix, and the third one is enhancements, and the fourth one along is a package that needs updates. So all my, all my hosts there are really good and healthy, so that's how yours should be. Uh, you see. And then from the Rata page here, you can see, uh, sorry, that's really stuff, really. Hopefully you guys can see that. Maybe, sorry, if you can't go back. Um, <laughs> so you've got a router over here, you've got a title that tells you what package it is, then you've got type, which says it's either a bug fix or security or it's enhancement, what have you. You've got how many hosts are applicable and installable in the fourth column. So it says all of mine say zero applicable, zero installable. Um, I didn't really have time to set up and downgrade my, my packages. So, so, there. so you can see here, you can click on there and go through and see. These hosts are applicable, these hosts are installable, and I want to resolve those now or not. But what happens when you have a critical update? Um, a couple of years ago, we had Shellshock, more recently, a 
few others. You know, every few months something happens, right? So let's create an incremental uh, content. So if we go back to the other slides, sorry. Remember here we had version one. Do we can create a version 1.1 .1 or version 1.2? An incremental version. That is exactly the same as the previous one. So if you want to create a version 1.1, .1, it's exactly the same as one plus the errata or the, or the particular package and version that you want to include, which is quite nice. So you can easily insert one package with that one fix you, you really want to do, but don't care about the rest. Kind of immediately, so you might have an automated system that says, I'll update these content views every month and then update your systems, but mid of the month you might want to quickly pack something. So Tracer. Um, have any of you heard of Tracer? Every time I kind of talk to anyone about tracing, no one's ever heard of it, but it's amazing. But you've all heard of need to be starting, right? You heard of need to be starting? Anyone? No? Okay. Um, so Tracer helps you find out-of-date applications on the system. So any application that's got file load into memory that has since been changed on disk is, is considered out of date. If you don't when you update a system, these files change, you need to restart those processes. Otherwise, all reboot. More often not people reboot, but some people don't want it. So you can see here, sorry guys, again, there's another picture at the back. Um, we've got our here, so I can see here that I've got a um, uh, cron D, for example. We can see that's a demon. And it tells you down at the end how to restart it. So it says uh, system CTL restart cron D, for example. Uh, you've got other types, so that's for like demons, services. Uh, you've got dbus here, which is a static type, which means you must reboot. So you see have certain things that you must reboot for, uh, dbus is one of them. Terminal is obviously another. You've got other ones for sessions, so I've got here a bash, bash lesson. Someone's got, a, someone's got a session open, maybe an SSH session. They need to restart their session to pick up an update that's been applied. You could also, buy can tell you, you can come here, you can tick these boxes, on the far right hand side there's a button that says uh, restart selected, it's great out at the moment. You can then restart. Um, if you've got a remote execution installed on uh, your Catalo server, you can obviously do that by Ansible or something else. All this data is available on the API. Uh, pretty. And obviously, if you've got your custom applications, you can define uh, helpers, if you like, so ways to restart applications uh, on, your, on your system. Right. So, email notifications. So we find like a whole host of different kinds of email, email, email notifications. Uh, so you can see here you've got the top audit summary. So this says, this means basically daily, I want uh, a report of what's happened to that host. You could do that not only on hosts, you could do that on particular kind of other objects. So syncing, uh, I want to kind of stalk this user. You could say user equals somebody. Uh, don't do that, that's weird. Um, so you've got kind of config state as well, so you want to subscribe to my, my host, the host that I own, you can subscribe to all, you can do none. I want to report about the state of my host and relate to configuration management, so Puppet, Ansible, what have you. Config summary, host built, so you want to see the script. So every time a host, new host is built, I want an email. Errata's, every week you might want a, kind of a list of saying, these particular hosts are, are, are applicable for these types of errata. Uh, promote errata, so when you promote errata through lifecycle environments, you might want to know about that. Sync errata, whenever you sync new errata, you can say, this errata is applicable, or I need to check and see if I need to do anything about that. So form and hooks. This, this, that really is Catello in, in a nutshell. Um, so now I'm just going to talk about how to integrate it with your environment. So, You've got formal hooks. Formal hooks allows you to way, allows you a way to run random scripts. It could be Python, it could be Bash, it could be Ruby, it could be anything you want, or it could be a command. Run, run scripts when you want to. Uh, so it hooks onto Rails callbacks. So when you build a host, or when you do something to an object in, in Catello or in Formal, you it can say run this script before or after that's happened. So you can say, if you run it before this happens, so you can say, when I, when I build host, when I create a new host, there's a whole host section of different things that happen. You could hook in in there and have your script uh, do something and then deny that host from actually building. So it can go off and check with another system, you might have a change management system or something. 
loads of different kind of options there, and then if it fails, like exit code non-zero, uh, the host won't be built. It will, it will say on the UI, it will say, look, this failed, this 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 hook failed, and someone wants to say maybe, or we can just go off and monitor. I don't know. Uh, um, loads of different options there. Really, really powerful. Really, really good. Again, everything has a RESTful API. It's JSON API, uh, API dot, so available on your telemetry and slash API dot. We've also got them on the, on the website as well. Um, any questions, guys? Any questions? Anyone want to use Catello before? Yeah, good. You like it or your version? Two dot something, you say. Three dot five. Three dot five. Oh, good. Latest version. Yes. You like it? Yeah. Good. good. Anyone else? I assume you're all thinking about using it. That's why you're here. Tom, <laughs> use it. You using it as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a question about that. Okay. I have a form and running and perfect automating. A form and running in a puppet automating uh, Hadoop clusters, or can I integrate the other parts of Catello? Yeah, so unfortunately, Catello at the moment it can't be installed on existing form, uh, which is a shame. It's something we're trying to work on, but um, actually, migrating that data over it isn't, uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it, it's not extremely hard. So it is possible. Kind of ran that way. Yeah. Any of you guys existing form and users? Okay. Uh, no more questions? Go. Is there any plan? Is there any plans to integrate things like um, Ansible Tower and that form and um, a little more? Or? Not right now, I don't believe. Um, yeah, not right now. There is a form and Ansible, Ansible plugin, which gives you kind of somewhat similar functionality to Tau, uh, not nearly the same. I think Tau will look better in all that case. But, yeah. Okay, um, if no one's got any questions, so I might be a bit short, I don't know what the time is. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Cheers guys, thank you. Thank you.